Hello, my name is Aurelio Voltaire. I'm not super rich and I'm not super famous, but I've been making a living from my art and music for the better part of 20 years. And if that's what you want to do, I think I can help you. Now, today we're going to talk about kind of an odd topic. We're going to talk about riding coattails. What does that mean? Well, it's an old expression. It means using somebody else's fame and popularity to help your own career, to possibly make yourself famous and popular as well. It has kind of a negative connotation, but believe me when I say there are correct ways and incorrect ways to approach celebrities or other people of note to help your career. And uh, we're going to start with the basics, as usual. There's no question about the fact that if you can get somebody who's a, already a celebrity or famous or successful in the field that you want to be in to collaborate with you, to endorse you, to share your work to their fan base, that would be a huge shot in the arm. But unfortunately, a lot of aspiring artists get caught up in that idea and they work too hard to try to make that happen and don't do all of the other things that you're supposed to be doing to become a successful artist. So you have to keep the focus where the focus belongs, which is working tirelessly and endlessly, being in the trenches every single day and making the art, promoting the art, which we've talked about in other vlogs, and working on your career. You should view a celebrity collaboration or endorsement as winning the lottery. Okay, so if you were going to have a business plan, your business plan would not read step one, win the lottery, step two, build a successful career. You know, your business plan would probably be laying down a foundation for first I'm going to make a lot of art and then I'm going to promote the art and then I'm going to get out there and then maybe if you're lucky, you'll win the lottery. So that celebrity endorsement, that celebrity collaboration, that's the icing on the cake. That's not the cake itself. So keep the focus where it belongs, nose to the grindstone, make the art, promote the art. That's where it all begins. Needless to say, it would be absolutely amazing if Tim Burton would tell all of his fans how incredibly awesome my music is. If he did that, there's no question in my mind that I'd be living in a much bigger apartment and there'd be more change rattling around in my pants. <laughs> but I do not spam Tim Burton's Facebook page, presuming he even has one, because I'm a reasonable human being and I know that Tim Burton is busy being Tim Burton and doing Tim Burton things. And since we've never met, I have no connection to the man, it would be kind of weird for me to tell him to come and promote a stranger. Now, I don't think of myself as a celebrity. There are some people who might. I mean, actually, I, I, I do think of myself as a V-list celebrity. <laughs> it's true. So uh, there are some people out there who, who think that, you know, maybe if I were to endorse their work or collaborate them or whatever, it would make them more successful. And there is no question about the fact that I've worked for 20 years to build a fan base, however small it may be, a lot of work has gone into nurturing that fan base and it's been mostly me working endlessly and tirelessly on my art and promoting it, remember. Um, and some people want to step in and, and the reason I say this is because I promise you this is true. Every week I get no less than a dozen total strangers who send me an email and say, this is my new record, please tell all your fans about it. Or hey, I just wrote a novel, it's up on Amazon, please advertise it for me. I have to politely explain to these people that if I were to indiscriminately do what they're asking me to do, first of all, my social media pages would look like Craigslist. It would just look like a whole bunch of random ads. And secondly, my opinion and my word would become valueless. So if I were to promote every project that strangers ask me to promote, my word would become valueless. My opinion wouldn't matter to anybody after a while. Uh, so don't spam other artists because other artists, I promise you, no matter how famous you think they are, how, how, how rich you think they may be, they are probably working endlessly and tirelessly to stay where they are, much less try to get more successful. So the solution is not to um, go and spam the pages of other artists that you think might be more successful than you. because and, and it, they might actually find it offensive because if they've worked for many, many years, possibly decades to build that fan base, 
they might find it a little offensive that you're saying, hey, give me that fan base, even though I haven't done anything at all to earn it. So that's something that you really, really don't want to do. So does that mean that I don't promote any of these projects? No, there are some projects I promote. So which ones are they? No artist, no matter how big they become, outgrows the ability to be a fanboy or a fangirl. Now, I don't really follow what Beyonce is up to, but I bet anything that on social media from time to time, Beyonce probably says things like, oh my God, I just stepped into this shop and it's really great, or I just found these boots, I love this designer. So the, the act of discovering something makes you can make someone who is potentially an influencer excited and want to talk about your work. I was very, very privileged and very, very lucky many years ago that Clive Barker, the author, uh, reached out to me through an interviewer, somebody who had interviewed both of us, and said uh, that he was a fan of my work and wanted to collaborate with me. I was in such a state of shock because I've been a fan of his for decades, but uh, the way he discovered me was that I was doing a, a web series on Sci-Fi Channel's website. It was very obscure, few people heard about it probably, it was called Chichan. But for whatever crazy reason, Clive Barker and his husband were fans and they would watch it. And he, he reached out to me to collaborate and he ended up writing a piece for my comic book, Deddy the Evil Teddy Bear, or Deddy the Malevolent Teddy, I think was the issue. But what a thrill to have somebody who I admired want to work with me. That would never have happened if I didn't, what? work tirelessly on my work and promote my work and get it out there. So this isn't really something you can kind of make happen, but if you work really, really hard and if your work is intriguing, it may come to the attention of influencers and celebrities and, and movers and shakers in the field of your choice. And you may find yourself in a, in a scenario where somebody's asking you if you'll collaborate with them or somebody is promoting your work to their friends just simply because they're excited about you and what you've made. There are other people out of those dozen or two dozen or so people who send me uh, emails every week asking me to promote their work despite being total strangers. There's other people in there as well that I'm happy to promote, and those people are friends and colleagues. So if you're friends with somebody who's influential, you know, they may very well be happy to promote your work. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, great. Well, you know, how the hell do I become friends with Johnny Depp? I've been wondering that myself. <laughs> how do I become friends with somebody successful like that? You know, especially if you haven't really put anything out or you haven't done anything. Well, let me share this anecdote with you. Uh, one of the greatest collaborations I ever did, and some of the kindest words that have ever said, been said about me publicly were by Neil Gaiman. And Neil Gaiman is one of our, the most successful, one of the well-known writers of our day. The man is uh, ten times, a hundred times more successful than I'll probably ever be. Um, and yet, he was open to collaborating with me, again, also on that Deddy comic book series. Um, because we were colleagues and and how did that happen? It's very simple If you are working endlessly and tirelessly on your work and that means not just making the work But going out there and promoting the work going out there, doing trade shows doing conventions getting out there in in the public You are going to find yourself in scenarios where you are rubbing shoulders with other people in the same field and well, as Neil, I, the story Neil wrote in the comic book was basically about how we knew each other, and it was because we were always running into each other at noodle shops at four in the morning, or as he put it, places where people go to sell their souls at four in the morning, because we would be at a lot of the same conventions together. And now I don't uh, pretend to be anywhere near as talented as Mr. Neil Gaiman, and I certainly don't pretend to be anywhere near as successful. And I can't speak for him, but I, if I had to imagine what he was thinking, he's probably going, there's that guy who's always at these shows, you know? And, and that, in and unto itself, makes you a colleague, because people see that you're working very hard, they see that you are in the game. Now, if you're the kind of person who's never released anything, or has never finished anything, but you're asking celebrities for an endorsement, and we covered this in an earlier vlog, I think the first one, uh, in essence, you kind of look like a beggar. You know, there's no reason for somebody to help you. You're saying, hi, help me, I've never done anything, help me. Um, so, 
you're you're like standing on the on the sidelines of a football field and you're begging the players to throw you the ball and let you play. But alternately, if you're on that field every week, whether you're good, whether you're bad, whether you're the bench warmer, but you're there every week and people see you, you're recognized as a player and uh, you know you're a player in the game. And subsequently, people might be more um, open to helping you out if even you politely ask for a little bit of help from somebody else who's a player in the game. So once again, it comes down to you got to be a player in the game. You have to make the art. That's the most important part. You got to get out there and promote the art. And it really, really helps if you put yourself in scenarios where you're meeting other musicians, other authors, other artists, whatever it is that you do. You kind of need to be in the industry. You need to be in the game. Approaching a celebrity who's a total stranger and asking them to promote your work is kind of like walking up to the mayor of your town and saying, hey, will you wear this sandwich board to advertise my sandwich shop? Who would do that? Nobody would do that. That's ridiculous. So you got to picture that scenario and ask yourself, in what scenario would the mayor go, okay, I'll wear this? And there's a few, as I've mentioned. One of them is, oh, you know, here's this guy. He's always at City Hall. He's kind of a colleague. I'll wear his sandwich board. The other one is, oh, that's my brother-in-law, or oh, that's my good friend. That's my buddy. I'll wear it. That's another scenario. And there might be one more. Just pay the freaking mayor to wear your sandwich board. <laughs> If you look at my website, I have a page, uh, it's voltaire.net slash collaborators. I have been so lucky, I've been so privileged. I have worked with so many of my heroes, Clive Barker, Neil Gaiman, members of My Chemical Romance, Richard Butler of The Psychedelic Furs, Debbie Harry of Blondie, Danny Elfman, Gary Newman, like the list goes on, Elvira, the list goes on and on. And what you may or may not know is that, uh, as we've gone through this list, some of those people uh, were willing to collaborate with me because they were friends, I mean, personal friends. And I called them up and said, hey, would you narrate my film? And they said, yeah, sure. And some of those people were colleagues, you know, maybe we weren't super close, but they were aware of my work and they knew that there was some legitimacy to my work and did me a favor, frankly, and, and helped me out. And then the rest of them are people that I hired. Uh, you can hire people. You know, there are some artists, like Madonna probably is unhirable. <laughs> you know, she probably has so much money that you have nothing to offer. <laughs> but um, a lot of us artists, uh, and even some people that you view as maybe very, very, very successful, we what we have in common is we all have bills to pay. We all have bills to pay. Um, if, if a random video game company sends me a message and says, hey, promote my video game, I probably delete that message. But if they say, hey, we want to hire you to write the theme song, you better believe I'm going to be all over promoting that video game because I want people to hear that song and I want to give as much as I can to that scenario. So there is no shame and you should not ever, ever be afraid to reach out to people through legitimate avenues and ask them if they would be interested in doing, you know, drawing in your comic book, writing for your comic book, uh, collaborating with you musically, playing a guitar part on your album, playing a keyboard part on your album. As long as you respectfully and professionally reach out to people through the appropriate channels and tell them straight out, I want to hire you. How much do you need? What, what is it worth for you to work on this project? People will listen for the most part. Well, at this point, you probably thought we were completely done, and those are all of the avenues at your disposal for getting somebody who's an influencer or a celebrity or somebody of note to endorse your project, to collaborate with you, but ah ha ha, there's another, there's another way that you can make this happen. We talked about this phrase before. It's a favorite phrase of mine in the world of business, added value. Don't be that beggar saying, please help me, I have nothing to offer you. Don't be that person on the sideline saying, hey, can I be in the football game? Even though I just showed up and I've never ever been here before and I've never been to a single practice. Don't be that guy. Be somebody who shows up with something to offer and you will turn the scenario around entirely. Let me give you one of my favorite examples. 
There is a band called Ego Likeness. They're based in Baltimore, Maryland. Many years ago at this point, I received an email from them. They said, hey, we're fans of yours. We like your music. We would really like to open for you. Now, we understand that you probably get lots of people asking to open for you. However, here's what we're offering. If we were to book the shows, if we were to book four or five shows, and we were to get you the money that you generally ask for, so whatever your guarantee is, you will get that. And we will provide all of the travel, and we will make sure that your lodging is taken care of. Would you allow us to book this tour and open for you? And I thought, well, I don't have to book the tour. I, somebody else will do all of the work. Somebody else will do all of the driving. All I have to do is show up and perform, which I love to do, and I'll be paid exactly what I'm paid anyway. Uh, yeah. So they booked that short tour. It was just a few dates in the Maryland area, DC, I think Norfolk, Virginia, perhaps. They were so pleasant. They were so cool. They were so much fun to be around and they delivered the goods. I got paid exactly what I normally get paid. They provided all the transportation and I always had a hotel room. And so a short while later, they emailed me again and said, would you be willing to do it again on a bigger scale? We'll book twice as many shows. I said, I'd be happy to. You guys are doing a great job at this. And we toured again. Long story short, that band got quite a lot of exposure, ended up getting signed to a record label, and now we have toured the entire country several times over together. In fact, after a couple of times of touring the country together, they now tour as a headlining act. They go out on their own tours. Now, I'm not saying help Voltaire and subsequently you'll have a music career, but what I'm saying is that if you want to approach somebody who has a fan base you want to reach, you want to approach somebody who has some notoriety that you want to be able to utilize to shine a light on your own work, you need to bring something to the table. You need to be able to offer something. And that basically brings me to the whole point of this entire vlog. Mutually rewarding scenarios. Even for me, it would be so easy to get lost in the notion that if Tim Burton were to advertise my music to all of his fans, I'd be far more successful than I am today. It'd be very easy to get swept away with that. But if you're the kind of person who gets so swept away that you're only thinking about the part of the equation where you benefit, you are in the very best case scenario naive, maybe somewhere in the middle, horribly self-absorbed, and in a worst case scenario, quite possibly a sociopath. You can't approach strangers and ask them to help you when the scenario is so lopsided that you're the only one who benefits. So, if you create a scenario where it's mutually beneficial, everybody is happy, everybody is fulfilled. It's strange, but business is sometimes just like life. If you make other people happy, they might make you happy back. So, do the work, make the art, get out there and promote it, and before you go and ask total strangers to promote it, ask yourself, what can I offer this company? What can I offer this influencer? What can I offer this celebrity that would make them want to be a part of this project? Ultimately, believe it or not, it comes back to mutually rewarding situations. Create those, and believe me when I say, success will come to you. If you have enjoyed this video, please like the video. And if you want to see more of them, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Of course, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to hear me talk about next in the future Rockstars Handbook, leave a comment below because I do read them and that's how I get the ideas for what to do next. Thank you so much for watching. The things I talk about on these vlogs are things that took me 20 years to find out and they've helped me tremendously and I hope they help you too. I am living proof that you can make a living from your passion, be it music, be it art, be it writing. I believe that, and I believe in you. I'll see you next time on the future Rockstars Handbook.